This morning we're going to learn how roles operate in MongoDB, and over the next couple of videos we're going to cover some built-in roles uh, in Mongo. And specifically we're going to be covering the read and then the read-write roles. That's because if you're setting up MongoDB, I would assume here that you're going to understand some of the administration basics. If you don't, I would highly suggest to look up that information. Uh, but for the most part, the person who's setting that up, such as a sysadmin or a DBA, um, should understand the administrative part very well. Now the read-write I can understand and the read uh, just because sometimes there are cases in which DBAs may not directly work with the application team um, or they may not be aware what the application team will be doing. And I have worked in organizations even though in theory they should always know that. I've worked in organizations where they did not know that. So it doesn't make sense. All right. The first thing to note is that um, when it comes to roles in MongoDB, the highest accessed or the highest authoritative role will have, will take precedent over every role. Or let me state that a little bit differently. That highest privilege role is going to trump any lowest privilege role. Let me give you an example. Suppose we have a database called our database and there is uh, a user with the role read and there is the user with the role read write. The read write role will take authority over the read role. Okay, so that means that if we only want the user to have read, uh, well that's unfortunate because the user has both, right? So what that means is that you want to grant a role on the basis of the bare minimum of what someone needs. Okay. Uh, they, they call this in the database world the least privilege. The idea is that if a person needs read access and that is the only thing they need, then you grant them the lowest read access possible. Now the cool thing about MongoDB is that in version 2.6, as an administrator, you can actually restrict access to specific collections. So you can even go a step further. It's awesome really cool so let's say you only want read on a collection you can do that the other thing is well one hack and I do this in SQL Server a lot because the, the reason why I prefer to do this is just from an organization and automation standpoint let's suppose I have a hundred users who need read access to various tables or whatnot um, and these tables do not contain let's say privilege data or they're just their data that these people need I might go ahead and just populate those tables into their own database and those people can go and they can look at it through the application and they have read access and that's it. Um, and the reason you know I prefer to do it that way is just again from an automation and organizational standpoint it's very easy to manage that way. Um, I don't really like the idea of, of table based access. Collection based access will work uh, but there are reasons why and again it goes back to automation. It's just one of those things in terms of debugging and troubleshooting that I've run into. That being said, do it in a way which makes that makes sense in your environment. The cool thing about Mongo though, if you want to do that in version 2.6, you're able to do that. Um, but do not ever give users more access than they should have. What is the bare minimum, or let's say what is the most they should be doing if reading, then that you want to give them that very, very restrictive role. Okay. And uh, so if you're not in Mongo 2.6, I would consider database restriction or even, for instance, if you have read, um, consider a database just for read only. Okay. So you can create roles as an administrator, and um, that's great. There are some built-in roles. And over the next couple of videos, what we're going to do is we're going to cover the read role first, and then we're going to cover the read-write role. And again, outside of that, I, I do expect administrators to kind of understand what your admin roles are going to look like. But from an application standpoint, you will find that read and the read-write role, um, and from the stakeholder standpoint, those are going to be very important roles uh, to look at, especially since I use Mongo a lot for trading and high-frequency trading, and then uh, some other tools as well. This is very important to know those two roles.